Moving through the Bible, we are now in Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, this week. And in the ninth chapter here, verse 1, Jesus said to them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death, till they have seen the kingdom of God coming with power. Jesus began his ministry with these words, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Here he is declaring to his disciples that there were some of them that were standing there who would not die until they had seen the kingdom coming with power. Just what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is where God reigns as king. Thus, the kingdom of God is in heaven. For God rules in the heavens. Now the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are synonymous terms. It is Matthew and only Matthew of the gospel writers that uses the term the kingdom of heaven. But it is wherever God reigns, that is the kingdom of heaven. Of God. God reigns in heaven, so that is the kingdom of God. Now, if God is reigning in your heart, then the kingdom of God is within you, as Jesus said to his disciples. But Jesus said, not all who say, Lord, Lord, are even going to enter into the kingdom of God. But he who does the will of the Father. So a proper understanding of the kingdom of God is that area where God reigns. If God reigns in your heart today, then the kingdom of God is within you. When Jesus comes to reign over the earth, then the kingdom of God will be here on the earth also. And that is what is requested when we pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God rules in heaven. We are praying for the day when God rules over the earth. And the Bible promises that the day is coming when Jesus Christ will return with power and great glory and will establish the kingdom of God here upon the earth and God will also rule over the earth. Now, right now, now at the present time the earth is under the rule of Satan and thus the kingdom of Satan or the kingdom of darkness presently reigns over the world. Jesus said to certain of the Jews you are of your father the devil and the desires of your father you do living in the kingdom of darkness, being ruled over by uh, satanic powers. There are people and the world itself is under the kingdom of Satan. Jesus called Satan the prince of this world. Paul refers to him as the God of this world. When they came to arrest Jesus, he said, this is your hour and the power of darkness, recognizing that the power of darkness ruled over the earth. When Jesus called Paul the apostle to preach the gospel, he said he was to go to the Gentiles to turn them from darkness to light 
and from the power of Satan unto God. That is, Paul was to bring people from the rule of Satan to the rule of Jesus Christ. Now, your life today is being lived in one of two kingdoms. You are living in the kingdom of Satan or you are living in the kingdom of God. It all depends on who it is that is ruling over your life. Whosoever you yield yourself, servants to obey, his servants you become. And thus you are subjects unto Satan or you are subjects unto God. Paul in writing to the Colossians referred to the fact that he had delivered us from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Thus, there are two vastly opposed kingdoms existing in the world today. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. And those who have submitted their lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ are living in the kingdom of God, but they are also living in a world that is governed by the kingdom of darkness. And thus, you are aliens. Do you often feel uncomfortable with what's happening in the world today? Do you find yourself at odds with the world's value system? Do you find yourself just sort of repelled by some of the things that are happening in this world today? When you read of some of the horrible crimes that are committed, when you read of atrocities, when you read of uh, sex crimes against children, do you find yourself recoiling inwardly against such things? That's because you are of the kingdom of God. And it's in opposition to the kingdom of darkness. But living in this world that is dominated by the powers of darkness, we find ourselves with that feeling of, of being sort of an alien. I don't belong here. Now, it was the desire of our forefathers when they came to America to establish a nation that would be governed by God's laws. And thus, our whole constitution was established in order to guarantee, hopefully, that it would be one nation under God governed by the laws of God. And in order to perpetuate that form of government, they sought to divide equally the powers of the legislative and the powers of the judicial, hoping that they would be a counterbalance to each other. They framed the Constitution with the purpose of, divide, of, of providing for the people domestic tranquility, to provide for the common defense, to promote the general welfare and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Now that was their desire and their goal. And this could only be accomplished as we put our trust in God and as we recognized that we were one nation under God. Now when the courts began to declare that to talk about God or Jesus Christ in the public schools in a favorable way was unconstitutional. They took us from a nation under God 
to a nation that was under the Supreme Court and the edicts of men. And they began to allow liberties that our forefathers never dreamed of. Liberties to abort babies. The liberty to exploit children in pornographic materials. The liberty to create, distribute, and to sell pornographic materials of the most explicit sort. No longer the liberty to pray in a public school. No longer to read the Bible in a public school. No longer the liberty to post the Ten Commandments in a public school. And our nation went from being one nation under God to a nation that was governed by men who for the most part were ungodly men and thus bringing this once great nation under God which led the world in liberties was the envy of the world to a nation that has become a second-rate nation that is the leading nation in the development and distribution of pornography, which leads the world in crime, which leads the world now in ungodliness. How is it that things turned and things changed, but we recognize it, we see it, we feel it? And once again, our hearts long for the kingdom of God. As we see the result of living in the kingdom of darkness, as we see the result of trying to rule God out of our public life, and we begin to see the disastrous consequences in the many areas of the breakdown of the moral structure the violence on the streets. We pray, O oh God, your kingdom come, your will be done. Paul the Apostle said, our citizenship is in heaven, whereby we look for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ who when he comes will change our vile bodies and fashion them like unto his own glorious image. I am a citizen in heaven, of heaven. My citizenship is in heaven. And thus, I am an alien in this world. Look at how all of the forces seem to be determined to tear down any moral values that a person may have. The movies, the music, the talk shows. In all of these things, what the Bible declares is evil is being touted as good. And what the Bible declares is good is being touted as evil. We're living in a world of darkness under the power of the kingdom of darkness, Satan himself. But Jesus now talking to his disciples who were living in this world of darkness, he said, some of you that are standing here are not going to die until you see the kingdom of God in power. What did he mean by that? In the next verse, Jesus, it says, took Peter, James, and John into a high mountain, and there he was transfigured before them. And they got a glimpse of Jesus in the power and in the glory that he shall have when he returns to reign upon the earth. 
The Bible says his raiment began to shine. It was exceeding the whiteness of the snow. And Moses and Elijah appeared and were talking with him. Later in the book of Revelation, John had a vision of Jesus again in the glory with which he shall come in his kingdom. And he said, In the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, I saw one like to the Son of Man, who was clothed in a garment down to his feet, and he was girt about his breast with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool, white as snow. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice like the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun that shineth in his strength. Sort of like they saw him there in the Mount of Transfiguration, brightness. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, for I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and hell. Jesus spoke of his coming again in his glory with all of his holy angels with him. He was talking to his disciples of the signs of his coming and he was telling them of the great tribulation that would first come upon the earth as men began to reap the consequences of a godless life and of a godless society. It is going to result in a tribulation greater than the world has ever experienced before. And immediately after the tribulation of those days, Jesus said, shall they see the sign of the Son of Man coming with power and great glory. The disciples had the opportunity of seeing Jesus in his glorified form as he was transfigured before them. And that's what Jesus was referring to when he said, that some of you are not going to die until you see the kingdom of God in power. But what will his kingdom be like? Well, it will be heaven on earth. As God rules in heaven, so when God rules upon the earth, it will be heaven on earth. No more tears, no more suffering, no more pain, for there will be no more sin, no more sickness, no more physical infirmities, no more wars, no more poverty, no more the exploitation of others. Heaven on earth. The kingdom of God, we read, is not meat or drink, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy. Righteousness versus sin, which is in its very nature destructive. Sin destroys all who are given over to it. It destroys love. It destroys the goodness. It results in death and destruction. The wages of sin is death. But the kingdom of God is peace in contrast to the striving and the envying and the wars and the disputes that are brought on by sin. The kingdom of God is joy. 
in contrast to the sorrow and the pain that is in the world today as the result of sin. One of the chief characteristics of the kingdom of God will be love. A love for God that is manifested in our love for our fellow men. The disciples were given a glimpse of the kingdom of God. They saw the king in his glorified form. Paul the Apostle speaks of an experience that he had in writing to the Corinthians. He said, there was a man in Christ about 12 years ago. And whether I had just a vision or an out-of-body experience, I'm not certain. But what I am certain of is that I was in the third heaven and there... What I heard was so glorious that it would be a crime to try to describe it with human language. It, it just, there's no words to describe the glory, the awesomeness of the heavenly kingdom. As Paul wrote to the Corinthians, he said, For I hath not seen and the ear hath not heard, and neither hath it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him, for those who have submitted their life to be ruled over by God and thus have moved into the kingdom of God. Peter, writing later in his epistle, of this experience that he had of seeing the kingdom of God said for we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty we saw him we were there. We were eyewitnesses. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory which declared, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. So Peter said, Look, we're not giving you some cunningly devised fables. We didn't make this up. We were actually with him. We saw the glorious majesty that the Father gave to him there on the holy mount. We heard the voice of God from heaven declaring, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And so we read there in Mark's gospel that as Peter, James, and John were there on the mount and he was transfigured before them, that uh, Peter spoke up and he said, Lord, this is great to be here. Let's build three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah because they appeared with him, talking with him there. Mark tells us because Peter didn't know what to say. You know, many times I think when you don't know what to say, it's best to say nothing, just to keep quiet. How many times when I didn't know what to say, I thought, oh, I've got to say something, and then I was sorry for what I said. And, and here's Peter just not knowing what to say, so he said, well, let's build three tabernacles. But then we read that a cloud overshadowed them and the voice came from heaven that said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And Moses and Elijah disappeared, but Jesus remained. They had a foretaste of the kingdom of God. 
And that person who has yielded their lives to follow Jesus Christ actually gets a foretaste of the kingdom of God. It already is beginning to work in us. And as the result of the kingdom of God beginning to work in us, we have love. A new love. We have peace. No longer fighting with the circumstances of our lives, but just yielding ourselves, allowing God to work and satisfied with the work that God is doing. If he is doing it, it's for my good and thus a peace with the circumstances of my life. I have a joy. A joy that's indescribable. It's full of glory. The joy of walking with the Lord. Walking in fellowship with him. Walking in his love. I have greater patience. I am more gentle. There is a temperance. These wonderful characteristics are now mine because of the kingdom of God within me, God ruling in my life. In sharp contrast to these characteristics of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, there are those who are still living in the kingdom of darkness and as Jesus said, doing the desires of Satan. And Paul said that the works of the flesh are manifests, which are these, adultery, fornication, murders, lying, deceiving. And, and he goes on and gives you that long list and he says, we know that they which are doing such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It's not for them. By what they are doing, it is obvious that the kingdom of God is not within them. They are not really serving the Lord. They may be saying, Lord, Lord. They may be even attending church services. They may be dutifully tithing. But God isn't reigning in their lives. They couldn't be doing those things if God was truly reigning in their lives. Today, you are either living under the rule of God or the rule of Satan. Living in the kingdom of darkness or living in the kingdom of God. It can't be both. Your life is being ruled by one of two. Paul was commissioned by Jesus Christ to help people get from the power of darkness into the kingdom of God. And that's our commission. And that's our purpose here today is to encourage those who have been living in the kingdom of darkness to come into a better life, the true life, life in the kingdom of God by submitting and surrendering yourself to be governed by God. The moment you make that commitment, there is a vast transformation that takes place in you. As vast as the difference between darkness and light. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you that Jesus came 
in order that we might be delivered from the power of darkness and brought into the kingdom of God. And Lord, today we wish to again acknowledge that Jesus is our King, our Lord. That we are submitted to his authority and to his rule over our lives. That we live to do his will. And Lord, as we look at this world today and we see how rapidly the world is going down the tubes, We pray, Lord, that your kingdom would come and that your will would be done here on earth, even as it is in heaven. Oh, Lord, come quickly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.